The February development update for Halo Infinite has just been released, providing us tons of awesome in-game screenshots, a new audio clip for us to check out as well, and some in-depth analysis when it comes to the world of Zeta Halo. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe right there. Let's get right into the content here. So we just received the February development update for Halo Infinite, and it's a little substantial, not as large as the January Sandbox one, but because this is much more focused on just the environment and the world of Zeta Halo. So what we're gonna do in this video is showcase you all the content that was shared within this development update, and also go into their design philosophies and new gameplay elements they revealed in this development update. So let's get right into it. Well, you've heard me say there's in-game screenshots, so you probably wanna see what the game looks like first and then we'll go into the analytics of the, what they said about the game so let's dive right into it the first screenshot we're going to take a look at here is boom the sniper rifle right here in halo infinite looking over some kind of forerunner structure obviously the sniper has been through a little bit of a redesign from halo 5 i think it actually kind of looks better than halo 5's honestly kind of a hybrid between halo 5 and halo 3 sniper rifle i think it looks great so let's start macro and then we'll go micro with each image here so first of all we obviously got to talk about this big boy structure right here what the heck is this thing um honestly we can't really tell right now at the moment. We haven't really seen any structure like this. I mean, the closest thing to it that we've seen was this picture showcasing this weird looking kind of structure here. These are kind of placed throughout the world of Zeta Halo. We've seen this kind of structure over and over again. So this obviously will have some kind of gameplay mechanic involved with it. But this is something completely different and something massive. This could possibly be the bottom of the structure that we saw from the cover art that's been rumored to be the Palace of Pain. If you guys know about that place within Halo's lore. Essentially, it was the Forerunner's location to experiment on humans with the Flood. That's why it's called the Palace of Pain because, uh, well, a lot of pain was given to the humans on that one. Uh, this does kind of blend the art styles between 343's Forerunner structures and classic Forerunner structures. Because you can see it with this is very more modern Forerunner structure with a lot of lights and intricate design. Obviously not overly done, which they mentioned in this development update. And you scroll down, you can kind of see a much more classic style Forerunner structures with this. Uh, another thing you'll see throughout these entirety of these screenshots, the lack of emphasis on the pillars that we saw in the gameplay demo and a bigger emphasis on the natural world. As you can see right here in this, in this image, the only time you see these pillars is in these distant shots right here. Now looking a little more closely into this image, you see that Master Chief does have the grapple shot on his wrist right there. So that's still an equipment piece that he has on. But when you look in the lower right hand corner, you can see the UI first of all has changed. You have a different kind of weapon we haven't really seen in game yet. We've seen it in promotional images and stuff like that. Yeah, it looks like a spike grenade that we've seen previously in Halo. But this one right here looks kind of like a ping kind of option with two dashes underneath it. This looks to be the equipment slot for Halo Infinite and you can carry multiple pieces of equipment, which is confirmed later in this video in the development update. When I first saw that, I was like, okay, well, maybe it was something I might have missed in the gameplay demo of the UI and something changed a little bit because it looks like we had that ping feature in the gameplay demo but it seems like things have kind of changed around a little bit since then. Because looking at the gameplay demo, you can definitely see the UI has changed, certainly. And when you look down in the equipment section right here, you can kind of see it just shows left bumper for the equipment. And so I th figured that the ping feature might have been something you could have as a player, kind of like the Artemis tracker that you had from Halo 5. But it seems like to be a new piece of equipment because when you see Chief activate this ping, like keep an eye on the lower right hand corner, it doesn't really toggle to that ping feature, it just kind of happens. So this seems to be maybe a, a piece of equipment that you need to utilize and switch to. Now, how many pieces of equipment you can hold on to? Well, we'll get into that later in this video. This next set of images we're going to be looking at showcases the day-night cycle that's in Halo Infinite. Now, we did assume this, but this was actually officially confirmed in this development update. One thing I want to point out about this structure right here, you can see how weathered and worn down this structure looks. Now, this 
would not be a traditional 343 style Forerunner structure. Is they're usually much more clean, much more vibrant, or a classic Halo art style with Bungie showcase a little bit more weathering to these structures because they've been abandoned for thousands of years. So I'll take you through the next few images they showcase here. They got a bunch of images down here just showcasing the different day-night cycle and different environments just in one section, how drastically different this environment looks. One image I really want to showcase is this nighttime image right here. You can see this beautiful nebula in the background right here and it just looks amazing. It just looks great. Here's a larger image of more of a dusk time setting right here, and you can see just how more natural the environment looks. Way less emphasis on the pillars while they're still in this image, but it looks way more natural to the environment. And also, you can actually kind of zoom in. You can see some alien baddies you'll probably need to be taken out to take over this uh, structure right here. Here's an evening screenshot that they shared from the campaign itself. You can kind of see the entire environment as a whole. The lighting is much more dramatic than we saw previously. This is like the dusk time which we actually saw the gameplay demo in. You can see how much better the shadowing looks in this game. Much more dynamic right here. Taking a close look at this image though, there are some parts that do need a little bit of work. First part is this little rock outcropping on top of this structure. To me, it doesn't look that natural and could use a little bit of touch up to make it look a little bit more natural, like some rocks fell on top of it. Although you can get a nice little shot of the pillars that we saw previously. They look way more weathered than we saw in the gameplay demo, which, which looked far more shiny and brand new looking. You can see what looks like to be like some kind of uh, put together base or maybe some kind of base you captured because of the green lighting right there. Generally green means good. Um, but you can see the different kind of pieces of equipment right there as well. So this could be some kind of base you need to go attack or maybe a base you currently own at the moment. But over on the left side here is where I'm talking about could you really use some love. You look at this forerunner structure, you can kind of see when you zoom in, pretty low res on the polys and low res on the textures as well. Now obviously, this structure is at a distance, but this might be something that kind of showcases a little bit more in game. Uh, especially if you can avoid some pop-in textures, but at this distance right here alone, it does look fine to me. Maybe while you're in game, you might not notice it as much, or maybe you notice it more. Again, I wanna put emphasis on the lack of pillars that we see everywhere, a much more natural, interesting environment. And the last screenshot here showcases quite some interesting parts right here. So we obviously have some banished banshees. We haven't really seen that previously, so now we get a chance to see, take a look at that. Uh, if you look down below, you see a banished base down below here. Maybe it's something along the lines that we saw in the gameplay demo, but maybe a little bit more fortified. We see what looks to be some kind of barricade right here, more towards the middle. We have another forerunner structure that we saw in the previous image right there as well. Massive forerunner structure in the back right here. You see these pillars kind of poking up right here. Some floaty bits right there on top of that. So the floaty bits of foreign stuff is returning from the 343 style of art, but uh, not as drastic as we've seen previously. And a little forerunner structure right there on top of this hill. But again, bigger emphasis on the natural environment, less emphasis on those p ugly looking pillars that we saw in the gameplay demo. Another really cool part of content that we got from this development update is a little bit of an audio clip from Halsey's journal as the file is listed right here. So let's take a look at it. How many now? 16 systems shut down so far. Seemingly random locations. I'm attempting to lock her and the others out of the main- You will not be able to stop her. She knows more about how this all works than, well, anyone. Dr. Halsey. John. What's the plan? The plan? Right now, we are in survival mode, again. Cortana's message has spread across the galaxy. Most sentient AI are siding with her. Against us? Yes. But maybe not you. Tell me, John. What was the last thing she said to you? She said... Goodbye. So now we've had a chance to look at all the pretty pictures and analyze them. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this development update to see what their philosophy is and some new gameplay elements that they revealed in this Halo Infinite development update. So to start this off, they talk about with the team what their goal is with Halo Infinite. What is their principle? What are their philosophies behind this game? Well, there's two main things that they're looking into. It's legacy and simplicity. Stated here specifically saying, 
As far as our artistic goals for the campaign goes, we have focused on two key themes, legacy and simplicity, when it comes to the visual experience we are building. For legacy, we really want players to feel like they are experiencing a game that they remember fondly with combat evolved in mind, but with modernized graphics, of course. As far as simplicity is concerned, we want to ensure that we steer away from overly noisy designs and detail, which is a key takeaway from the team coming off of Halo 5. I think overall that just sounds fantastic. Bringing in the legacy feels, they're saying a spiritual reboot. They do mention a lot of times about trying to give you a combat evolved kind of feel with this game. And with this quote, it really just kind of hammers down what they've been trying to do with Halo Infinite and also talking about the simplicity and not having that over designed look that they've had with Halo 4 and 5. This next section they talk about inspiration for making Zeta Halo. They talk about two major parts of the art and also the gameplay style as well. Where they got the inspiration for art they actually pulled a lot of influence from the Pacific Northwest around the Seattle area which I'm personally from. Now I'll tell you that Seattle has a lot of woodlands around the area, a lot of mountainous ranges as well, which from the images we looked at earlier definitely do match the kind of look of the Pacific Northwest here in America. But a lot of woodlands and some snowy areas as well with these mountain areas. So possibly we will not be seeing much in the way of desert lands. We've heard about marshy wetlands that we saw in the January development update, mentioned that previously. So maybe not expect much in like this sandy kind of deserty kind of areas that, that we saw in like Installation 00 back in Halo 3, but more kind of woodland areas that we saw in the mission Silent Cartographer, which they mention here specifically. Now we know Silent Cartographer is one of the most iconic missions in Halo, and they mention here specifically talking about how you have such a grand entrance and how free flowing and open that level is. You can kind of go about playing that however you like really. And how you're the one that's really activating these engagements are not like preset on rails kind of walking down corridors essentially kind of situations like we had really more like in Halo 5. And how open-ended gameplay and leaving it up to the player how they want to go about interacting with the world is the big selling point of the gameplay for Halo Infinite. 343 has mentioned previously that they really base a lot of the mission Halo from CE as the way to kind of go about doing your missions within Halo Infinite. Remember towards the end of the mission Halo you have three different bases to save Marines and so basically you can go about either way you want to go to either one two or three in any order you would like and as you complete all three then the mission completes and there are multiple angles and ways to go into each situation and that's a big emphasis that they put on with the gameplay side of this development update. Now remember earlier in the video I mentioned about how it seems like you can carry multiple pieces of equipment now in Halo Infinite and that is confirmed in this development update saying here specifically you can carry around another three pieces of equipment with their own unique roles and utility that you can quickly swap between at any time. This seems to be a drastic gameplay change to what we saw in the gameplay demo because if you guys remember a chief had the grapple shot as the innate ability but then once they picked up the drop shield it replaced the grapple shot and once that drop shield was used it switched back to going to the grapple shot but now it seems like you can carry multiple pieces of equipment at any time you just kind of toggle through which one is most effective to you at that moment which could either free up a lot more gameplay opportunities for you to play around with or completely break the game again we'll just have to look into it and see how it plays once we finally get a chance to get some gameplay though in this development update they, they did spend a lot of time talking about the grapple shot and the utility of it but the, everything they mentioned is what we've seen previously but it seems like this grapple shot might be kind of a standard ability on master chief or something you can kind of toggle with not totally sure at the moment. Previously, I was getting the impression that your equipment was a bit of a loadout kind of thing you would set yourself up with, then you go into an engagement. Maybe now with equipment, it's something you kind of just play along with on the fly and whatever seems best at the moment you have on your character, possibly. This might be one of those hashtag ask343 moments. They do briefly go into co-op gameplay. If you guys remember, we have split screen, two player couch co-op, but then we also have four player online co-op as well. Now they don't really go into specific details, but they do kind of hint about how having co-op as an a bit chance to play around with the game 
really lends itself to some really unique capabilities and some unique combinations. That's kind of how they stated the whole thing. Uh, they don't really go into any specifics, so maybe the way the equipment works with each other, you can really kind of come across some really unique gameplay situations. The art team also goes into their current status of where they are within the development of Halo Infinite right here, saying the art team, like most of the development teams, are quickly wrapping up all of our remaining tasks and polish items as we approach our bug, fix, and performance stage of the game's production. We will spend the final months bug fixing, ranging from floating trees to T-posing enemies, as well as ensuring the game runs smoothly across all platforms. This is gonna be a major thing because they mentioned how they want PC to be a first-in-class experience, and yet it still needs to run on the Xbox One from 2013. So they definitely need to do a lot of testing to find some way to kind of get a sweet spot of visuals on the Xbox One and also on PC. Talking about the development on the Xbox platform, they mentioned here saying, we've been regularly reviewing the Xbox version of Halo Infinite with our multiple partner teams. And while the work in progress images we are presenting today are captured on PC, they help to deliver a deeper look into the development on Xbox. And this last segment is a bit of an excerpt from Joseph Steen like we've seen previously, just kind of giving a little glimpse at the gameplay that Halo Infinite has to offer. Though a very important distinction that they make in here is stating that Halo Infinite is not an open world game. They have specifically said open and expansive world, but not open world. Joseph Steen here says, Specifically, it might appear that we are building an open world game, but that's not really the case. We're making a Halo game, a sandbox shooter, where our goal is to make you feel like the most powerful actor in a rich, emergent sci-fi combat simulation. Now, this is something I covered previously on the channel that yes, it's not gonna be an open world game. I have a very strong feeling that it's gonna work very similar to say, ODST, where it starts out in these segmented locations and then as you play through the game, the world opens up. Talking about crossing different sections, Joseph Satan mentions saying, capture a banshee and fly to a floating ring fragment across a gap of stars, showcasing that they're gonna be using these aerial vehicles to go from different sections, most likely. Now I won't go into everything Joseph Staten says because that is, deserves its own video by itself right there. And I do plan to go over this development update in deeper analysis to kind of give you guys a deep dive look into what exactly they mentioned and how the implications of what they say and the principles behind their design of Halo Infinite showcases how this game is going to play out. If you guys have missed any videos from me recently or want to catch the next ones coming up, make sure you subscribe. Check out the videos on the screen right here if you missed any content from me recently. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.